Hey guys, it's Believe Gaga, and today I'm with a fragrance review. I haven't seen a fragrance review in a while. I feel like they're getting more and more rarer for me, you know? I don't know. I mean, that's how I started this channel. That's why I started this channel, but I don't know. I've been vlogging. I've been making songs. I've been singing along. I've been crushing on Rami Malek. I've been doing a lot of things, okay? And I don't know. I feel like fragrance reviews are like they're rare like I still have fragrance and everything like I still have like oh a large collection of fragrance if y'all can just if y'all are in my room right now but I don't know I feel like I haven't really been doing them and I feel like the ones that I've done have been like rushed or forced even though I really like the fragrances but hopefully this one's a little bit more better since I do love this fragrance so much and I don't know but let's get into it so today's fragrance that I'm going to be reviewing let me take off my sunglasses and if you're wondering these are the Lady Gaga for Versace sunglasses I don't know, I just thought I'd wear them since, you know, this is a Lady Gaga review. There's my Versus by Versace watch. You can watch the reviews on these two somewhere. And, of course, the review for my Taylor and Hasselhoff Skulls on Fire necklace. You can watch those. I'll put a card. I'll, I'll try to link it, which I never really link them. But you can just skim through my videos, as always, and you'll find it. You'll find what you're looking for. So, let's get into this review. So, this is another Lady Gaga review, and I did review Fame as well, so you can look up that review. But this is Eau de Gaga 001, like they say. Eau de Gaga, Paris, New York. So it's like, looks like this, hopefully. Oh look, you can actually see the reflection of all my fragrances. See, I love fragrance still. But it's Eau de Gaga 001, Paris, New York. And basically, bottle-wise, black bottle, you can't see through it, obviously. It's not like those translucent black bottles or stuff like that, kind of like the kim kardashian black bottle where it's like it seems like it's solid but it like you can still like see through it you know but this one you just cannot see through holding up to the light so it is like blacked out so um this is a unisex fragrance this is more unisex than fame smell wise but the bottle i believe it kind of plays with your um it's a bit of rogue by rihanna Chanel number no. five. Um, I want to say Tom Ford fragrances, but I don't believe it's Tom Ford that I'm thinking of. I don't remember the scent or the designer of the fragrance, but um, uh, EJ Johnson uses that fragrance. And if you don't know him, he's from the Rich Kids of Beverly Hills. And I think it's Velvet Rose. Joe Malone. Joe Malone fragrances. I believe that's what it is. Um, that like square bottle, because this looks like Chanel, I want to say number no. five, or like Chanel Coco Noir, I believe. And obviously, it's, it has, when you play with textures and you play with bottles, that kind of gives away the fragrance in a way. So it's a black squared bottle. Um, it's very feminine looking in the sense of, like I said, your Chanel number no. 5, classic like square bottle, old timey look. And then it is also masculine because it kind of has like that blacked out um, look of CK1 Shock for men. Because it's black and it has the white on it. But then the silver plate and the way it says Eau de Gaga, Paris, New York, 001, that kind of lends to like the old way fragrances were labeled and made like that so it's kind of very like playing around with like a little bit of everything you know but it is its own fragrance and like i said it's just black and blacked out and rectangular so it has that classic look to it does that mean we're getting a classic scent yes we are getting a classic scent and that scent is citrusy it's woody it's powdery it's leather and it's floral so let's read into the fragrance a little so Eau de Gaga, I'm reading off my laptop, so that's what you're wondering what I'm looking at, is an enigmatic scent fusing daringly diverse elements to create a beguiling allure. I don't know, that's how I'll say that word. Um, the fragrance is built around a beautiful heart of white violet, an intoxicating flower that fuses male and female attractions to counterbalance this opulent woody floral intensity. The scent opens with an invigorating burst of sparkling lime that exudes dynamic vibrancy, and it evolves into a central trail based on leather, adding a primal quality to the scent. All those words are very good descriptions of this scent, I do have to say. Um, but this scent is kind of... I have this. I actually have the scents here. To me, the closest scent that you'll get to Eau de Gaga in general would be Halle Berry's Closer. Now, Halle Berry's Closer is a female fragrance. I still haven't reviewed this fragrance. I feel like I've mentioned it a couple times. Like I mentioned some fragrances that I haven't reviewed. But I know this one does have white violet, but it's kind of like if you don't have the leather and the lime to it, you know? But it's very... It is like a close skin scent. It's very intimate. It's very sexy. It's very sensual. And if you want that leathery smell, I'd say it'd be Closer by um, Halle Berry and you add in Just Me by Paris Hilton. Uh, you can see it there a little. 
Just Me by Paris Hilton because this one has like a warm it's a warm scent now it's sharp but when you smell it it kind of warms your nasal passages when you smell it I don't know if that happens to anyone when you smell a scent and the way that it's black and stuff but it's like an ombre it's like black to clear so it kind of shows that it's a heavy dark classic -y scent but it does like evaporate like it gets clear at the top so when you look at fragrances and colors and textures and stuff look at the colors look at the way it it is colored and then look at the color of the fragrance itself if it's a colored fragrance if the bottle is just colored if the bottle is a translucent color if the bottle is getting ombre or something then you know it's going to have like some kind of flair to it and also i guess that lime scent to it but with the berry because i believe this is some kind of earthy berry smell i forgot the name of this fragrance and i don't know if i reviewed this fragrance already but i know i reviewed other ones it would be the signature christina aguilera scent and this one has that classic clean scent, and even with the lace and stuff, you can tell it's going to be like a classic -y scent. So I feel Eau de Gaga is sort of a mix. I mean, more or less closer to closer the scent, you know? But I feel like with a leather and like that lime scent, like you would kind of add Christina Aguilera's signature and Just Me by Paris Hilton to kind of give it somewhat of that lime leather scent. But it's, there's no lime or leather in those two scents. But, you know, it's kind of like you're getting there. But Eau de Gaga, number number one. Um basically when I smell it right off the bat it kind of smells just like sparkling lime you know like it is described as sparkling lime scent and is that what I'm getting of course you're getting like a really open sh fire shot of sparkling lime and it's very nice honestly and it's very strong because I remember I sprayed this once in class and you know how like somewhat big classrooms are I like sit on the far end of the other side and people who smelled it like smelled it right away on the other side So it is a strong scent like it's gonna like I guess disperse quickly in the air. Does that mean it lasts long? We'll get into that but Sparkling lime that's what we're getting but Don't be fooled by sparkling lime because that's not all you're getting because the white violet is definitely coming out right away and the white violet scent, that's exactly what you smell closer, but you will recognize that the lime and the leather do make a difference between those two fragrances, and they smell totally different, because the closer you kind of get that, I guess, softer white violet feminine feel. But it kind of has like a masculine feel with the undertones of, um, I want to say sandalwood and closer, and with this one, you have the leather, which leather, given that, that primal scent, leather is kind of acting like the musk in this fragrance. But you are going to get just the white, violet, and the lime, basically the whole scent. And you are going to be left with that trail, like they said, of leather. But this scent, to me, is basically just three notes. And that is your lime, your violet, and your leather. And there is one more note that it has on here, but literally top, middle, and base notes is just lime, violet, leather. And what is that other note that it says? can't read what it this is a oh, woody notes um i wouldn't say there's any woody scent in here there's well that's a lie um if you smell dolce and gabbana light blue for men it kind of has that sandalwood appeal to it but i think that's because of the leather and the lime mixing with the white violet so this kind of does have like a woody scent to it but you can definitely tell that it is the lime the violet and the leather because those are very, are three very distinct scents. I mean, two two of them more, you know, like lime and leather. Like, you can just distinguish that scent right away. Now, given, like, the color and the way the bottle is presented to you, is that, like, a luxury scent? Of course, it is more luxurious to me than, like, fame was presented, you know, because fame just seemed mysterious and draws you in. And the fragrance was a very kind of incense -y, sappy, floral, apricot -y smell. And with um, Eau de Gaga, you kind of get this almost luxurious sharp smell like kind of like a sharp rich man and then if you wear it as a woman i feel it'll kind of get the white violet and lime more out of it than the leather and the leather will kind of just be like a musk you know like it's gonna give you that floral sandalwood appeal and i'd probably say that would be close to i guess like a ck1 or a rebel and nude by rihanna kind of mixed together but more or less leaning towards like i guess Dolce and Gabbana's light blue for men with a dash of rogue by Rihanna, you know, like it's kind of sharp, but it's soft, but at the same time, they're blended well together in that smell. And I know this is probably just sounding like so confusing, but basically this is just 
a white violet lime scent and that leather is always going to be like a musky scent like you're going to smell leather obviously from the beginning because there's only three notes in the scent basically but it does give you that sandalwood appeal so if you like sandalwood smells obviously go for this if you like citrusy smells i think this is a different kind of citrus than we've seen in some celebrity fragrances but the lime the sparkling lime it's very it's going to be very noticeable but it is a strong scent it is very powerful longevity um i don't know for me i feel like it never really like did like a full eight hours but then i'm probably used to the scent like they say but as i'm seeing here people were kind of saying that it's long lasting and kind of moderate so i'd probably say kind of like with me i was going at four hours but i'd probably say five hours you know i feel like six seven eight that's kind of like dragging it i feel like it's more of a skin scent but kind of like a little bit weaker than a skin scent because it's kind of like fame where it kind of had a strong like smell like it was very strong like when you sprayed it and stuff like the room is going to smell like fame but as you wear it, it became more intimate and more sensual and that's what i've noticed with these fragrances like they have very strong openings but then they kind of remain close to your skin and kind of like i guess inviting for someone else and the silage like i said a lot of people also said moderate heavy and enormous so it's not on the soft side it seems soft because you won't really recognize it if you've already gotten used to the scent like how like i guess big the scent is going to be but it is a very strong scent in the sense of when you spray it and if you're in a room of people that you sprayed it in they are going to smell it you know and they're going to compliment it because it is very well blended feminine and masculine scents because white flower is used in both and with that it is the violet the white violet and like i said that is in halle berry's closer so if you smell halle berry's closer you are going to like it men and women because that is like the fresh fougere scent that she was going for and I, I think she won an award for it halle berry and that fragrance and this eau de gaga kind of follows in that same trail but because of the sparkling lime and leather it does seem a little bit more masculine than feminine but of course this is a unisex fragrance so both sexes can enjoy it so i don't know overall this scent does have a very strong projection does it stay projected for a while i probably say for a good hour hour and a half at most like people kind of in a biggish medium sized room will smell it but then like two three four five hours like it's going to get closer like if they're like near you or like if you like brush past them then they'll smell the scent other than that it's going to become more of like a musky leather lime scent to like your own i guess skin chemistry you know kind of like that and i'd probably say with that this is like a luxurious smelling scent it is very sharp it's very rich like and when i say rich that means these notes were very well blended together and these notes are going to be very signature in a way because from fragrances that i've smelled i think we've always smelled like the cigar lime scents the cigar leathery scents and stuff like that but this is like a white violet limey leather scent so this is kind of something different especially in the celebrity field because you know like with your justin bieber's and your kim kardashians either just reproduce like gardenias and tuberose those white flowers or it's kind of just like something really sweet and like cotton candy or it's just something kind of very like i guess classically soft but eh, like mariah carey's um the one that looks like a crystal bottle forever i think it's called and i guess chloe lamar's unbreakable love the blue bottle like those are kind of different in a way but not really um but i guess the closest scent you can get to this would be halle berry's closer so i'd probably say Smell Halle Berry's closer and then smell Eau de Gaga and kind of decide which scent you like of White Violet. Do you like your lime and your leather or do you like the softer kind of like, I guess, satiny feel of Closer? Because Closer is kind of more like an intimate scent than Eau de Gaga. Eau de Gaga is kind of like, I guess, the expensive hooker scent that she promised with fame that we didn't get. But I don't know. I Overall, I like Eau de Gaga. Um, do I wear it every day? No, because I feel like this is a scent that you really have to be dressed up for you know like obviously you don't have to dress up to wear a scent but i don't know that's kind of the way i'm associating it you know like the way it's presented to you the way it comes out of the box if you buy the big bottle how it slides out in a velvet kind of like the versace one and i don't know i like this scent overall like it's just it's beautiful it's nice it's very well blended and everything like that so if you like closer by halle berry if you've already smelled that or you like the unbreakable love in the blue bottle or just me by paris hilton or christina aguilera signature fragrance if you can kind of find a similarity between all those scents, then you'll probably love Eau de Gaga one, but I'm pretty sure more men will like this fragrance than women, you know? But I could be wrong, you know? Because it does smell very masculine compared to Fame, because Fame was kind of, even though it was like a unisex scent, which it kind of wasn't, um, it was more like, I guess, feminine-based, so that sweetie, powdery scent. And this one did say it was 
powdery. Do I think it's powdery? Ah, I think it's the leather smell that gets you that like powdery appeal to it because of like that sandalwood effect that we get with all the notes blended together. But it is very citrus and it is very leather floral. So I'd probably say those three notes are really what you're going to smell, but it does give those powdery woody effects. But other than that, it does become like, I guess like, and like, I don't know. It becomes a beautiful kind of skin scent to you. So it kind of plays well with body chemistry, I believe, in my opinion. So I guess that was my review on Odegaga 001. And it does come in a red box, and it kind of has, like, this, like, silver thing on it. And it kind of looks like brushed metal, like, red brushed metal. It kind of has, like, black trim on it. But the big bottle kind of, like, slips out, like, velvet and stuff. Let me actually show you how, like, if you were to buy the big bottle. So, like, this would be, like, all red or black trim. This is a Versace Eros, and it would come out like that with, like... I believe it's red velvet on the inside and the bottle will be waiting in there so you know if it were like the big bottle of Ode Gaga like you would have your fragrance in there like that you know like it would be like a slip out so like I said that was my review on Ode Gaga one and you can watch my review on this Versace sunglasses uh, my skulls on fire necklace by Taylor and Hasselhoff um, the fame fragrance and other stuff that I mentioned in the beginning of this video I forget so like I said, that was the review, and I hope you liked it. And until next time, I want to say hi to Rami Malik and stay safe and God bless. And who knows what I'll come back with the next time, you know, a review, a vlog, another singing thing. I don't know, you know, just ideas. But it has been like, I think, two or three days since I posted. So I don't know. Hi, Rami Malik.